How you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, August 21st. Here in the Atlantic, we're still dealing with Invest 95L here in the Western Gulf, just off the coast of Mexico. And uh, this is still uh, trying to develop a little bit of a circulation here, but hasn't been able to do much since yesterday. The frontal boundary that it's on the tail of was stealing uh, some of its convergence yesterday due to its strength, uh, putting up a bunch of thunderstorms and not allowing much of the air to pile into 95L circulation. And therefore, the thunderstorm activity has been rather scanty, but it's still trying to put up some thunderstorms storms and uh, may still try to wind up just before coming ashore in a day or two. I think they're still sending a recon plane out there today, but given how it has not explosively developed so far, it's probably not going to be much of an issue except for extra rainfall for northern Mexico and extreme southern Texas, which was basically expected, uh, but this could still try to wind up just before coming ashore, uh, but it's not a big deal. Out here in the Central Atlantic, big story is Tropical Depression number 9, which developed last night from Invest 94L. And this is still chugging along westward. Notice how it crossed 50 west, and as soon as it hit the warmer water, it started firing off the thunderstorms. Had a nice burst last night on the southwest side of the center. A little bit smaller in coverage today, uh, but is uh, starting to ramp up now. As soon as it hit the warmer water, as we talked about yesterday, it would probably try to do. And uh, what's interesting, though, is how the northeastern side of the system is rather void of thunderstorms. And this isn't really because of dry air. You can see the convergence boundary from when the system was developing into its pocket. And it actually has a nice area of high uh, precipitable water values around the circulation. It's in a nice bubble. Dry air isn't really being entrained into it. Uh, the problem is, because this convergent line, convergence line is out here, it's illustrating how a lot of the air uh, during its development was being thrown away from the center uh, to its east. And this has not allowed the air to pile up up on the eastern side and force the air to rise and generate thunderstorms and uh, that's probably why the eastern side is empty right now that will change as the circulation gradually tightens and you can see some of the um, more focused low-level cloud bands showing up on the northeastern side now indicating that convection will start popping there eventually with time and we have a buoy here uh, just a few miles, a few dozen miles south of the center that it just, uh, the center just passed directly north of it a couple of hours ago. Pressure dropped. It's down to 1,010 millibars, which isn't that impressive really for how close it is to the center, indicating that this may not be tropical storm strength yet. But a plane will be going in there in a couple of hours and will tell us whether we have tropical storm Isaac or not. Now here are the model tracks today, and uh, you can see that this is going to continue as expected on a west or west-northwest track until it gets into the northeastern Caribbean. And uh, here the models have uh, shifted a little bit closer to my idea today. They're now taking it over Hispaniola and uh, through the Bahamas east of Florida in general. Uh, yesterday a bunch of them were down here taking it in the general direction of Jamaica. They've since shifted northeastward and are now over the Dominican Republic and Haiti, similar to my track. The black line here is the official NHC track, which is on the southern side of the guidance envelope, which is interesting, they're not following the consensus as closely as they usually do. They're probably going with the European model, uh, which I forgot to put on here, actually. But it has a uh, storm coming through the Caribbean, strengthening, becoming a Cat 3 right here, uh, just west of Florida at 960 millibars. And this is the first run where it really strengthens the system. I'll be interested to see a couple more runs from the European to see where it actually starts trending, because for the last several days, it's been struggling to develop the system properly because of its large size and it still may be struggling resolving the entire situation so once it finally gets a handle on this developing system we'll see where the European model tries to go uh, but that is the Western outlier at this point it will be interesting to see how it performs on this uh, but I'm much more in line with the uh, 006C ensemble mean of the GFS here which I just outlined which goes through the Bahamas and comes north which you'll see in a bit Speaking of the GFS ensembles, uh, here they are, 500 millibar wind out to, um, actually this is the initialization, and uh, the storm is right back here, starting to develop, and uh, you can see the ridge to its north here. Notice that it's directly to the south of this ridge, which indicates it's going to continue moving westward in this deep layer easterly flow and not gain a lot of latitude as it gets towards the Caribbean here. However, once we go out to day four, notice that this ridge shifts a good 15 degrees eastward at the same time that the storm is moving westward in here, and notice the weakness that we have off the southeast United States coastline. 
and the forecast philosophy that we've been discussing for the last several days about why this weakness should be here, why it should be north of the Bahamas, and to, uh, why it should turn this north has not changed. The models now agree that this weakness should be here and that the ridge should shift east, which it follows with the pattern. And now the question is, how fast will this take advantage of the weakness and how fast will it recurve? And there is still some uncertainty here, uh, but I believe with the ridge shifting eastward here, it looks like uh, this flank of the ridge on the western side is pretty soft and this should be strengthening enough to come across Hispaniola and move on to the north to the east of Florida somewhere in the Bahamas uh, but at this point I still don't think it's coming as far west as the eastern Gulf of Mexico or the Florida Peninsula itself however they're still in the danger zone as we're still looking at a five to seven day forecast here but you can see my track takes this uh, over Hispaniola and uh, up through the Bahamas east of Florida again the cone especially uncertain on the western side given we have the European model over there and the fact that if this gets entangled with the islands and weakens enough it can drive it farther west so there's more uncertainty on the western side of the cone than the eastern side uh, and Florida should definitely keep an eye on this as well as Cuba the Bahamas and the eastern Gulf all the way up through North Carolina should be watching this carefully but we're still a week away from a potential United States landfall so uncertainty still exists there um, regarding the intensity, this should intensify, I believe, to a moderate tropical storm, moderate to strong by the time it reaches Hispaniola over here. I'm not as aggressive as the NHC, which has it as a Category 2 hurricane near the tip of Haiti here in four days. I don't think it's going to rush at hurricane status and power right through that. The Eastern Caribbean doesn't look quite that favorable to me. Still going to be a little bit of a struggle for this to get going fast, and I think the rapid part of the strengthening of its life may occur if it gets water time on the northern side of the Caribbean here is when I think this could truly become a hurricane if it starts approaching the United States as conditions will be more favorable there. Obviously it's going to get knocked down before that point if it crosses the high mountains of Hispaniola, but given that it should be a weaker system I believe upon crossing the island it will have an easier time regenerating on the other side with all of this warm water and favorable upper ridging aloft and uh, this should have no problem strengthening. Uh, at the islands here, impacts are probably going to be lower tropical storm conditions as far south as St. Lucia in here. That's where they have the watches, or the warnings, I'm sorry, so far, and they have watches out for Puerto Rico for the northern side of the system. And uh, given the convective layout right now, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the heaviest conditions on the southern side of the center as this approaches the islands instead of the characteristic northern side, which the islands are uh, more used to being the stronger side. So be aware that the southern side may have the tropical storm force winds with it as well. Hispaniola uh, shouldn't be um, should be wary of the fact that the NHC makes this a hurricane as it approaches. I do think it'll stay a little bit weaker than that, and they will probably have a hurricane watch up for that island pretty soon here later today as well. So we will watch this closely, and we'll also keep a wary eye on 95L. Not really a big deal. This will be the big story over the next week or so. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.